Hello YouTube, as you can tell, it is the 6th of the month, 2019. I mean, the 6th day, 11th month, um, 2019. And today we are now going to compare Marion Wimerson up against Senator Elizabeth Warren. I thought, let's, be, let's keep this thing going with the comparing and contrasting. I'm trying to figure out who would I do next. I might do Bernie Sanders versus Elizabeth and then Andrew Yang versus... But see, if I do more than four of them all combined, the videos will really get lengthy. We'll see how it goes. But today, we're going to do Marion Wilmerson versus Elizabeth Warren on several key issues, starting off with health care. So let's go ahead and get into it. Of course, the videos will be time stamped so y'all can jump to specific sections of which, you know, policies that I go through with comparing and contrasting against both. So as y'all know, um elizabeth warren is more um is for universal health care and this is how she plans on going by doing it she has the tax where she is proposing two percent on people making 50 million or more and she recently doubled her wealth tax on billionaires from three percent to six percent to fund this universal health care and then this goes into describing everything about it. Y'all can pause the video to read over stuff. For time's sake, I'm, you know, not reading everything in detail. Then she goes into talking about the lowering the cost of prescription drugs. Then she goes into mental health. Then she goes into fighting the opiate crisis. And then also focusing on rural community, um, rural area communities as well. Now, this is Mary Wimerson in comparison on the same policy. So both of them are very lengthy policies, rightfully so. And then she goes into the Pacifics. And this is what strikes me be, uh, with Marion Wimerson over both Bernie and um, Elizabeth Warren. Notice she's the only candidate that talks of going a step further, talking about how to prevent the diseases in the first place. So we won't even have to worry about even having to go to the hospitals. Because it's like, yeah, it's good to have health care insurance, but if somebody can avoid the hospital altogether or the doctor, that would be the ideal situation. And neither Elizabeth Warren nor Bernie Sanders bring that up about the fact that our government is corrupt where it profits off of the sickness. And we have to deal with the corruption within our government where we have to argue about why Medicaid for all is um, so important uh, anyway for so many people to use. It's like, yeah, we can give everybody universal health care, but that's going to keep the corruption going if we do not address why so many people need it in the first place versus tackling the root of the problem. So that's one thing I really love about Mary Wimerson over Elizabeth Warren. And you know, Bernie Sanders, he, he's a non-factor, honey.
I don't know where it said about the food pyramid. She said somewhere in here about, a, uh, you know, updating the outdated food pyramid, which is, once again, I spoke about several times before about dairy being recommended to human beings. Yet every race in the world, for the exception of white people, um, have a majority intolerance to dairy products. Yet dairy is constantly... Um, recommended to us 70 per, 70 plus percent of asians have an intolerance to dairy over 50 percent of hispanics have intolerance to dairy 70 percent of black americans have an intolerance to dairy 70 to 75 percent of native americans have an intolerance to dairy only white people in america and abroad tend to have only a 33 percent of tolerance to dairy so the fact that it's recommended to us just because the majority of one race of people that represent only 15 percent of the global population can tolerate said product that is a, a that, that is you know ra racist within itself in a way that you will put food recommendation upon other people that have shown signs of making us sick, that builds up mucus within the body, that lowers the immune system, that causes also a myriad of other diseases, Crohn's disease, ultracolitis, um, acne. If you ever suffer from full-blown acne, your darn acne can decrease automatically in most cases just by eliminating the dairy out of your diet in some cases. So your dairy intake also is contributing intrinsically to your darn go acne symptoms. And yes, as an esthetician, I can recommend you, you know, topical products and this, that, and the third. But you'll be amazed how much your uh, what you ingest in, um, internally actually reflects in your body. Because just getting people off of dairy has shown more quicker results than me giving you... Now, I mean, of course, I'm going to still treat the skin and because you're going to still have, you know, post-acne scarring. Some of y'all might have pitted skin and, you know, this, that, and the third. And then you still will have the acute breakouts here and there. But the, the good bulk of what's going on on the inside is usually dairy intake. And you can immediately uh, treat that just by changing your diet without having to uh, come out of pocket heavy calls for chemical pills, etc. So I'm, I'm glad that she also focuses on that as well, as opposed to uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren just stay stuck on, you know, treating the call, I mean, treating um, the issue after the fact, but not trying to get down to the root of the cause. So next thing we're going to uh, compare is LGBT rights. Where is hers? I'm trying to compare all of theirs that they have similar. I think uh, Marion Wimerson has one on the opiate crisis as well. So we'll do that one next if I see a opiate. Let's see. Education, food. But Marion Wimerson's uh, dealing with opiate addictions and stuff was also uh, within the health um, thing, within her health care policy. Okay, LGBTQ rights. So let's compare and contrast. And the reason why this is so important, just in case y'all did not know, um, there is two historical cases going on right now. One involving black people's civil rights um, being at risk where our rights can be taken all the way back to pre-slavery. Yeah, believe it or not, we dealing with that in 2019 where our civil liberties can be potentially in jeopardy in 2019. And then LGBT rights 
uh, with allowing um, employers to discriminate against LGBTQIA um, employees, uh, firing them just because of who they are, that is also up for the Supreme Court as well. Both of those are coming up next week, so this is why this topic is very important. I mean, it's important in general, but definitely during this particular week. Okay, amend system, uh, uh, existing civil rights laws. And y'all remember we spoke about this where um Donald Trump was trying to make it legal for um for doctors to be prejudiced against um uh, transgenders where if you was just to go in for a simple checkup uh, or whatever have you the um uh, the doctor can deny service to you just based off of your um uh, gender identity which can be very dangerous in life threatening situations where you need let's say a neurologist or endocrinologist or something that is very rare and it's not that many of those specialist doctors within the facility the area that particular specialist decides to have a prejudice against a transgender person um that transgender person's life can be a danger even though all doctors supposed to abide by the medical oath um not to do no harm and that means you're you supposed to put your personal religious and you know overall views aside even if you do not agree with somebody else's lifestyle but of course donald trump is trying to make it where uh he can uh force people to pee their religious and personal views on to everybody else the same exact thing that you try to accuse gay people of doing but the difference is you're accusing gay people of being on your tv screens too much and they're going to flaunt and they darn going to love and happiness. But you are forcing your actual religious views and disdain upon somebody is actually putting people's lives in danger. So when I hear people talk about the gay agenda, and the only thing they can show from the gay agenda is darn on men in magazines dressing uh, however they want to dress on their own continents. Nobody's forcing them to do such. Nobody, uh, you know, doing whatever they want to on TV on their own free will and you have the liberty to change the channel but a transgender might not have the liberty to go to a darn on another doctor especially if it's an emergency situation but then she goes on even more to say include sexual orientation and gender identity as protected classes under the federal fair housing act which once again is another thing because ben carson has been caught out here saying transphobic shit as well. And been out here uh, low-key trying to make it right, uh, legal for, you know, LGBTs to be denied housing based off of their uh, gender identity and sexual orientation. Just simply because of who they are. But we don't talk about that though. So I'm really, I mean, Mary Wimerson is going in, in extreme details and not leaving no stone unturned. Here we go, lift the trans uh, transgender military ban. Because once again, what people want to say that transgenders are the ones uh, out here trying to push stuff on people. Gay people trying to push agendas on people. 
Yet here's the stuff that we deal with on a daily basis. Now tell me why, I mean, I, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole again. Like I say, I can't even make sense of dollars. And then I just seen a comment today from somebody talking about Trump 2020. And this is why I, I have to come to the conclusion at this point in the game, after all these videos that I've done, if you're still talking about Trump 2020, you are, in a way, homophobic, trans a uh, pro homophobia transphobia uh you know bigotry towards black people and any other marginalized group you as a white person who supports trump in 2020 and you are still okay with this in 2020 you are a part of the problem if you are co-signing the problem you are a part of the problem and that includes my fellow black people, too, talking about darn on Donald Trump and his 10-point plan. Because guess what? When he was cutting those darn on HIV, darn on AIDS programs, that did not just affect the LGBTQIA community. That affected the black community as well. Because black women have a, a, a good high rates of darn on HIV, AIDS as well. Atlanta is not just opposed of, uh, uh, you know, composed of LGBTQIA uh, people. Is a lot of straight black men and narring on black women that have HIV AIDS as well. So keep that in mind when y'all be supporting this darn on LGBTQ darn on prejudice rhetoric. And that goes for both my black and white darn on viewers. And like I said, transgender military band, yet your ass didn't go in the army, Mr. Darn on Bone Spurs jumping foot to foot. But I love to hear some of these Trump 2020 people that are going to uh, try to defend that. How y'all defend transgender people who served in our army, who risked their lives, yet your own president wasn't willing to risk his life because he had them bone spurs join, uh, uh, jumping from foot to foot, though. What happened to respect our military? Oh, it's just respect them until they transgender. And then, you know, we're going to give them a discharge. And not only give them a discharge, but you want to uh, classify it as a dishonorable discharge. Not because they violated any laws, but simply because of who they are, it should be considered a dishonorable um, discharge. Now, I love some of my pro-military people uh, to explain that to me. Because I, I didn't see y'all was y'all wasn't too vocal when it came to the uh, transgenders being banned out the army, but any other time we be talking about you know we need to respect our darn on so see this is this is why I don't darn on take the Republican Party seriously with this bullshit. Y'all will say darn on respect our military, and don't darn on uh, push back against the homelessness with our darn on veterans. Y'all will say respect our military until it comes down to talking about the outdated darn on long wait lines and shit that was going on with our darn on veterans. Our housing issues with the veterans. Transgenders being kicked out of the army because of who they are. Y'all don't address none of these motherfucking issues with Donald Trump. But you know, little pro military though. Now, let's see what uh, Mary Wimson has in comparison. Because, I mean, um, Elizabeth Warren. Because Mary Wimson, she set the bar high. She ain't leave no stone unturned. Okay, she came out strong. She she She's quoting um, uh, Marshall P. Johnson and Silver um, Rivera, who helped lead the Stonewall riots. Y'all know Stonewall of 1969. Okay, she's also mentioning about the work of discrimination. Uh, 
Okay, same thing. Mary Wilson also was for. So they buy equal on that. Also ending the filibuster. Um, I'm 50-50 on the filibuster. Okay, see, now this is a plus. The weaponization of religion to discriminate against or harm LGBTQ people. Because I notice a lot of that shit as well. Y'all like to quote this darn on Bible, but we supposed to be a darn on a, a, a country that respects multiple people's religions. But every time we come to darn on talk about why you feel the need to put this policy against LGBTQ people, it's always a Bible scripture being quoted. So I, I'm definitely with Mary. Uh, with uh, damn, both of them names out. Marion Wilmers and Elizabeth Warren. Warren, I'm definitely with Warren on this. It doesn't help that both of them have the same W sound and last name. So I'm definitely with Warren on this one. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, this is the damn plus. Now, I ain't even know it was down to the schoolhouse. Now, see, this is a damn shame. Now, even down to motherfucking education, if you're darn on LGBTQ+, plus, you telling me, darn on, you got colleges? But then again, you do have those Christian colleges. And this is why I say uh, my LGBTQ folks, I don't know why y'all be fucking with them darn on Bible people in the first place. I don't know why, you, like I said, it's a form of Stockholm Syndrome, if you ask me. In my humble opinion, I, I don't want to be around nobody who don't have any likings for me. I don't want to be around no darn on negative, darn on hypocritical energy where you violating everything in the motherfucking Bible, your damn self with 10 pounds worth of makeup. It reminds me of that fat, uh, that fat ham hop thigh looking darn on bitch. That darn on uh, ham and hair darn on 10 pounds of cake the Mrs. Potato Head looking bitch. What, what, what's her name? I, I, See, I can't even darn on remember that motherfucking fat and triple neck bitch name because I, I I try to darn on forget toxic people like that out of my mind. But she's a very famous Christian singer. I honestly can't even think of her name right now. But see, this type of shit reminds me of some of the stuff that she endorses. But she ain't trying to endorse a darn on Weight Watchers program to get rid of them two of them three chins. She ain't trying to not darn on overly darn going uh alter her face don't the bible speak about altering your appearances and stuff with that darn going overly caked up makeup that now that the gays ain't doing your makeup and hair right you out here looking like motherfucking mrs potato here with your darn going starchy darn going oompa loompa looking ass ham hop thigh motherfucking looking ass Oh, it wouldn't pay for me to know her name right about now i might let me pause this video to find out who Kim Burrell, that's who I'm thinking of. That motherfucking Kim Burrell. But I ain't even gonna uh, harp on her. I ain't even about to read that water buffalo today. Like I said, and we need to even stop darn on entertaining certain motherfuckers because it's it, it not even that. It seems like people profitize off of our misery because they, uh, the only time you hear from that darn on ham hawk looking darn on looking bitch is for the if she has our names in her mouth now of all the things to speak in the bible the motherfucking bible didn't focus just on lgbtq issues but she always want to quote darn on leviticus but she don't want to quote them darn on seven deadly sins miss gluttony Miss Love Handlers trying to leave your motherfucking darn on stomach whore. Miss darn on hypocrisy. Because like I said, you, you, you was darn on good with them queens that had your wigs and stuff together. But you know, let me, let, let me go on here and get up out my darn on personal feelings. See, I was about to darn on turn this into a reading session. That's not why y'all came here. Let me get back on track. I apologize for my lapse of judgment, but that just reminded me of that darn on trifling, darn on uh, moose looking Kim Burrell. But anyway, she goes to further uh, state about how her administration will also make LGBTQ plus non-discrimination a condition of federal grants. 
In 2014, President Obama issued groundbreaking executive order barring federal contractors and subcontractors from discriminating against LGBTQ employees. I will build on a legacy by requiring organizations that receive federal grants to have a clear non-discrimination policy pro prohibiting discrimination against LGBTQ plus people. Rightfully so. So both of them look like they're going to be equal on this. Because she's also talking about expanding affirmative action, supporting LGBTQ youth um, and families, lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth are almost five times as likely to have attempted suicide as their straight peers, 10% of transgender people aged 18 to 25 reported having attempted suicide in the last year. Honey, trust me, I know firsthand because hell, Sometimes in life I ain't even worth living with all this darn on the trials because it don't seem like it get any better. Ban and conversion therapy, rightfully so, because you have certain people such as Mike Pence that were darn on uh think it's okay to dare gonna force conversion therapy on people. Definitely here for this as well. Okay, see, uh, I might have to give the win to Elizabeth Warren on this because she is going even more. Let me compare again because I want to say now she's really going into even more intricate details. Now, both of them really gets to now Marion's gets to the point of certain stuff as well. Even talking about the police department. But I really like how um um Elizabeth Warren's is really laid out even in more details. She brings up the statistics and everything. Honey, truck, she ain't never lied on this one because when I tell you that there are uh, problems with securing jobs in rural areas, I can tell you from firsthand experience. So that's another plus from Darn on Elizabeth Warren. So ultimately, I like both of them on that one. Both of them Darn on won me on that one. So go back to the issues. Okay, next is um, both their policies on dealing with climate change. Okay, even more. So she got good solid points. And then she expands on them.
Okay, I've seen nearly all of them talk about, you know, and I and I think it is key to uh, start transitioning to electric cars. So she got deadline for 2035. Also expanding it to heavy duty trucks as well. Oh, even the airplanes. Okay. Okay, now let's see what Elizabeth Warren, I, I, yep, I finally got it correct for once, y'all. I was getting their names confused for the longest. So let's see what Elizabeth Warren has to say in comparison. And then the last one, we're going to do a unique uh, policy that each one has that differs from the other. What makes them stand out? Okay, she bringing out more Pacific dollar amounts. I noticed that's more uh, Mary Wimson didn't go into details on the actual dollar amounts versus uh, Elizabeth Warren is actually going into projecting in the actual dollar amounts that it would cost. But both of them are pretty much on board. It's just Mary Wimson is actually you know going more in detail with the actual dollar amounts but as you can tell both of them are talking about 2035 for you know trucks uh oh wait a minute there might be a little differences right here we will achieve 100 percent clean renewable and zero emission energy and electric generation and in doing so we will create millions of good jobs oh wait a minute for all new light duty passenger vehicles, medium duty trucks, and all buses. Okay, so Mary Wimson actually has more of a point here because she actually included um she included the planes and the heavy duty trucks. Like she made sure to come um, to get all of them in there. Versus um um Elizabeth Warren, she focusing on the more medium duty trucks and the uh just the standard buses instead. So we're going to have to give Mary Wimerson a point on that. See, now my thing is with the Green New Deal and that projection of $90 trillion, I'm trying to figure out if this is a world issue, why am I always hearing about the Green New Deal from the American perspective? That's the only thing I don't like about that Green New Deal. It's like, uh, yeah, we're the leading country in the world, but we shouldn't be on the hook for the entire $90 trillion. I think, you know, they should be talking more about bringing all of the world's countries up into this. 
all darn going to help and contribute to that bill if we're going to be talking about the Green New Deal because this is truly a global issue. So I don't know why we always end up, when it comes to the financing of that Green New Deal, I don't know why it's always um, brought up as if America should be on the hook for all of it when, you know, America is opposed to, what, 8 billion people on Earth and America only uh, encompasses about 320 million of those 8 billion people. So I'm trying to figure out where is the other 7.7 .7 billion people coming into play when it comes to this Green New Deal. Inquiry minds want to know. Okay, we about to get into the differences um, in a minute with this because uh, I want y'all to point out with this, including for drilling offshore on public lands, Marion Williamson actually goes a step further. And I'm going to explain that when I go into comparing different policies that they have. Oh, sec, thought I stand corrected. She included the tribal land after all, so okay. I was about to say the irony of Dargon uh Elizabeth Warren, Miss Dargon uh uh Poetin Indian. Now I don't know what where is Dargon Elizabeth Warrington from? Because they like to nickname her Pocahontas, but Pocahontas tribe is from Virginia, and I don't believe Elizabeth Warren is from Virginia. But her Dargon people claim that they're from some sort of Indian tribe. So, but it's definitely not the same tribe that the actual legendary Pocahontas is from. So y'all tell me what tribe is um, in the uh, state that Elizabeth Warren is in, because it's definitely not the Powhatan tribe. But she actually does include the uh, the protections for the Native American land, which is what Mary Wimson has. But she has a Pacific Dargon bullet point that expands on Native American protections versus the irony that, you know, Elizabeth Warren doesn't. But she does include them in a good lengthy section um, right here. And on this note, I guess this would be the perfect time to transition into the different policies that each one of them has. Starting off with Marion Wimerson actually having a particular section, you know, a very specific section just for Native American justice rights. So to all my Native American subscribers, here y'all go right here where she has a whole plan specifically dedicated towards Native American people. Versus if we go to uh, um, Elizabeth Warren, she got y'all in this, you know, section of a plan, but not a, you know, a sole plan dedicated directly towards Native American people exclusively. But let me double check again so I don't eat my words. Nope, she don't have nothing very specific. She got immigration, so she got the Hispanics. Because we know, you know, immigration reform, they don't talk about the West Indian and African Hispanic, I mean the African people, um, when they talk about immigration reform. But no, no Native American um, protections. And that was weird because I thought she said, I, because didn't darn on, uh, she was mentioning about reparations for Native American people because Marion Wimerson came on to the scene talking about reparations for black people. And then um uh elizabeth warren was talking about 
uh, reparations for Native Americans, but now I'm looking on her site and I'm not seeing where she, she was uh, where she had it. So I guess she was just saying that just to say it, because I do not see it nowhere on her site. And I'm looking over carefully. We got debt relief for Puerto Rico. Once again, another Hispanic area. No shade to my Puerto Ricans, but I'm not seeing the Native Americans in here. Versus, you know, Elizabeth Warren, she got a whole dedicated section. So keep that in mind to all my Native Americans. Return dominant control of the Black Hills of South Dakota to the Sioux, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota nations. The Black Hills considered sacred to those nations were promised by treaty in 1868 and should be returned as promised. So to all my um, Sioux Indians, uh, Mary Wimerson actually has your best interests in heart. And then, of course, one more is, of course, the reparations plan that separates uh, Mary Wimson, which, you know, I still think needs some tweaking. I, I, Mary Wimson, I know somebody has redirect, uh, has sent y'all my videos by now. I, I'm still going to need to know why have we not added the itch to zero on to this? And why uh, have you changed the game up where we ain't talking about cash disbursements no more? I I'm sick and tired of uh, people uh, thinking that we we the only tribe of people, we the only group of people where we had to get just economic restitution, but everybody else was able to get cash and economics. So yeah, we need to um, update this, Marion Wimerson. And like I said, I know some of your people on your on your uh, camp have seen my videos by now. I, I'm going to need some questions answered. But ultimately, she still recognized black people specifically, which is something that I can say neither Cory Booker nor Kamala Harris has done. Now, Ernie, uh, uh, one black candidate and one candidate in black face, because until she does her ancestry test, I'm going to keep saying she's in black face. So here's the Pacifics. The payments will be made over a period of 20 years to reparation councils made up of black leaders from across the spectrum of American academic and cultural and political leaders. The stipulation on the part of the American government is the following that the money be applied for purposes of economic and educational renewal. Also, no personal money. See that to see? Now, this is what's going to, uh, uh, you know, this is what's going to fuck you up, darn on Mary Wimson, when it comes to a lot of black people. I, I had to say it like that. Now, they, we was all with you until now. See, this is why I do the research. This is why I do the research for people, because people be taking it at face value with these candidates. And then when we start to break down their policies, because nobody goes to the websites no more. Y'all just go and maybe listen to the debates and take them at face value. But when people like me actually go to fact check them and see when they update their sites, because as soon as Andrew Yang was updating his site, who was the one that gave y'all the updated darn on policies on? This is why people like me is very key. They catch these darn on little changes in real time because now, Mary, you was, I, I thought you was the one that was for cash disbursements for the longest. Now you, you done changed the game book. Now, now, I will give you this. Now, at least unlike Kamala Harris, who is trying to imply that all black people is, you know, just essentially poor and she's only going to affect people and accomplish with bills that affect poor people, such as, you know, tax breaks for people who make less than $100,000 a year. So black people who make over $100,000 don't deserve nothing. 
See, a true black woman wouldn't have said no shit like that. But then again, she's not, even if she was black, she's not even a black American. You know, her father is from Jamaica of uh, of uh, presumably Indian descent ancestry. Because for people who don't know, there are Indians uh, in Jamaica as well. If you look at her father, her father looks like he could be a combination of black and Indian, which means at best Kamala Harris is about 25%. And, and we just broke down about this thing with um Evelyn Lozada. If we're not accepting Evelyn Lozada, who is significantly darker, with actual curly hair, and she and she's only twenty five percent. Um, I, I I think it's only right that we do the same with Kamala Harris until we get some actual definitive proof that she's at least biracial. Cause you got one whole parent that's Indian and then another one that's suspect. And then it doesn't help that we find out that your darn gone father actually owned your ancestors owned slaves. So that might be reason why you don't never speak up on darn on reparational darn on uh, issues. Because if your darn on people in Jamaica decide to, to mirror, you know, us black people and get, uh, try to go for theirs, I think darn on Kamala is a little bit scared that they uh, they might be holding some of her folks accountable on her uh, paternal lineage. But, you know, we're, we're darn going to bring up Kamala in another video. Right now, we're going to stick on Mary and the darn on um, Elizabeth today. But yeah, nonetheless, at least Marion Wimerson, um has focused specifically on black issues. She has focused specifically on Native American issues, um, in addition to talking about Hispanics as well. Versus when you go, um, oh shoot, why did my thing, hold on y'all. I don't know why it exited it out. Hold on. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I don't know why it exited it out on Elizabeth Warren's thing, but like I was saying, Elizabeth Warren, like so many other candidates, when you go through her um plan, you only see that she's focusing on immigration when it comes to focusing on specific races of people. Because once again, when they talk about immigration, notice that they don't never mention anything about um matter of fact let me click on her immigration bill as soon as i see it i don't even see it but they don't never mention about africans because I ain't no candidate mentioned about um libya going through slavery in 2019 I ain't nobody mentioned about the haitians being all deported back to um haiti but y'all um give asylums to hispanics so we're we're talk we're giving favoritism now. Where was that darn gone favoritism? Where was that same level of protection when it came to the uh to the West Indy folks such as the Haitians and to my African people? But you know, let's go ahead and bring up one um good policy of Elizabeth Warren's that differs from Marion Wimerson. Cause overall this ain't a bash neither one. I'm 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 gonna make it fair on both sides. So let me bring up a good policy that's unique to Marion Wimerson only. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out with the ultra millionaire millionaire tax. So the ultra millionaire tax, um, pretty much is going to tax the richest people. So right now she got a 2% annual um, tax on households that make between 50 million to 1 billion. So I guess she ain't updated that yet. Oh no, that's what she had before, my bad. 3% tax overall on households um, above 1 billion. This is what she haven't updated because she just recently just said she was going to uh, tax them at 6 uh, at 6% instead of um, 3%. 
So a 10-year revenue total of $2.75 trillion estimated by Zays and Zucan. Okay, so that goes somewhat into ask uh, a answering my question of how she goes how she's gonna go by calculating the net worth of certain people who own stock in like stuff like Uber, which tend to fluctuate greatly. So is you gonna tax it based off of the perceived net worth of what you know Uber is worth at that moment? Cause any day it can fluctuate by as much as seven to ten billion dollars. So the stock reflects just as uh just like that. You also have, you know, royalties, which can tend to fluctuate with an artist as well. Also, perceived net worth of what makeup lines are worth, they are tend to be, um, their net worth is tend to be perceived by their future earnings potentials versus what they have right now on hand. So, are you going to charge them based off of the current net worth of the value of that said company today? Or is we going to also tax it at the perceivable net worth that it has the potential to earn? Like, I need those specific questions answered when it comes to this. So I'm glad she says that they're going to work that out on getting, the, you know, the specifics on that. So she also has invasion measures because people was wondering, okay, what about people who's just going to take their ass out of America and do a Tina Turner, honey? Getting them six and chills. Switch my ass down to Switzerland. Hot damn. Honey, darn on Tina Turner been in what? Switzerland for the darn on past 30 some years now. She said, darn on fuck the US. I ain't stunting you motherfuckers. So, for people who want, now of course Tina Turner didn't darn gonna leave for that reason, but just in case somebody want to darn on, uh, uh, do 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 their heels all about the darn on United States with their billionaire fortune. This is the penalties that y'all are gonna have: a significant increase in the IRS enforcement budget, a minimal audit rate for taxpayers subject to ultra millionaire tax, a 40% exit tax on net worths above 50 million of any U.S. citizen who renounces their citizenship, and a systematic third party reporting that bills on existing tax information exchange agreements. Adopted after the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. See, now this is where it's going to get a little bit complicated. Mm, da, 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 da. It's complicated. Hug a shout out to Miss Darn Old Janet if you're nasty. Now, what about people who have dual citizenship but decide uh, with their dual citizenship to put the majority of their fortunes in another country? Now, how are you going to go about doing that? Because now they, they have not renounced their darn old worth per se. But now the bulk of their worth is in another country that they have dual citizenship with. Let's say, per example, La France or, you know, Africa, Le Congo, Senegal, um, Medical. Now, I don't speak Spanish, so I, that, that's my best Spanish impersonation of, of Medical. Um, Brazil. Like, what if they darn gonna have dual citizenship in one of those countries? And they just put the majority of their worth in one of those. Now, I don't think they would do it with Europe because I think France, out La France, has a higher tax than America. So that wouldn't make sense. Um, it pretty much anywhere in Europe. Now, Africa is where it's at if you really want to avoid it. And you can really live like a darn on world dainty. Like, even if you have two, three, but then again, this is really for people who make over 50 million, like she said. But for people who want to put their um, fortunes over there, honey, you would really be living like you Bill Gates over there if you got two, three hundred million dollars. And like I said, how how would that go with people who have dual citizenship as opposed to renouncing their citizenship altogether? 
Because most people have dual citizenship instead of renouncing. So she needs to add a penalty for people who automatically starts to ship their money overseas. There should be an exit tax on the money that goes out. Even in cases of dual citizenship. So I, I believe that she should put, let's say, a 25% tax on if over half your net worth automatically get redistributed to this said dual, you know, link country, there should be like a 25% or 33% exit tax on that. But if you want to renounce your citizenship altogether, okay, 40%, that sounds fair. So that is it, y'all. That is the compare and contrast in a nutshell. Oh, she goes even more in detail. Okay. Okay, she gives good examples. Example. So that is it, y'all. Y'all feel free to thumbs up, thumbs down, share. Like I said, Marion Wimerson, we need some answers on that reparations. Um, Elizabeth Warren's camp, we need answers about this darn on Green New Deal of why, you know, America is on the hook for the total cost of $90 trillion. I, I need answers on that as well. Also, you the Native American running, and I'm glad that you did mention um, Native Americans uh, uh, somewhat. But you did not give them their own section like Mary Wilmington did. And also, uh, Mary Wilmington went a step further to give um, control of the Black Hills back to the respective tribes. So point for her on that. Also, um, getting um, compensation. You know, the conversation. Lord, I said compensation because it does involve compensation. But the conversation started even more on giving somewhat direct benefits to Black Americans in the form of economic restitution, but I want her to add back cash reparations. We need to have a combination of both. No other group in the uh, in the history had to settle for one or the other. Native Americans got cash and they got darn on economic restitution. Jews in 2015 signed off by Bernie Sanders himself. And that's why I said Bernie Sanders is a non-motherfucking factor because the fact that he's still up on this darn on, uh, you know, pussyfooting on black issues. Yeah, every time y'all want to throw up, he darn on march with Martin Luther King, this, that, and the third. Honey, some of darn on Martin Luther King's biggest enemies march with him. Y'all take that for whatever y'all want to take it for. Because I don't see what Bernie Sanders done for black people since except for darn on march. But anything he's done since he had power, tell me what he's done directly for black people. And every time somebody asks Killer Mike this, uh, 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 Senator Nina Turner, they, 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 they always deviate from the damn subject. They always speak about stuff that affects everybody in a positive way. And yes, of course, as president, you need to have policies that affect people all good. But when it comes to groups that are specifically marginalized and suffering from oppression more than others you need to also have policies that directly affect them exclusively and, they, and, they, and it seems like you don't have no problems with that when it comes to hispanic folks and you didn't have any problems with giving reparations exclusively to jewish people but then a year later it's, it's the visa for black people that's why i said bernie sanders he, he, he done lost the boat when it came to black people. I don't care how much shucking and jiving darn on um, uh, Nina Turner, uh, Miss Sanders, no relation to his wife. He has a black woman named Sanders campaigning for him to kill a Mike. Some of the Congressional Black Caucus, honey, y'all can miss me with the bullshit because that same Congressional Black Caucus is the same ones that we just talked about with Brian Allen coming to with civil rights involving black people. Ain't none of them spoke out on the darn gone potential rolling back of civil liberties for black people. And this is for, uh, supposed to be the Congressional Black Caucus. So some of them darn gone defending Bernie Sanders don't add no darn gone uh, validity to him as well. So this is why I say it's really between Elizabeth Warren and Marion Wimerson when it comes to me. Because Bernie Sanders, when you really darn gone get past the, uh, the, uh, the superficial fluff, the popularity, the feel, the burn, and all that shit, when you really get to digging into his darn gone policies, you truly see the treacherousness of him. 
that's why I say I I I, I would vote for darn on Donald Trump before I vote for darn on um B uh, Bernie Sanders. But Elizabeth Warren, I Elizabeth Warren's okay with me overall. Now she got some work to do on certain stuff as well. Um, but however, she's a lot more of a better choice in my personal opinion. Um, than Bernie Sanders because I know a lot of people like to say they, they they're basically one and the same. No, they're not. And they they're really not. Elizabeth Warren is way more tolerable, in my humble opinion, and is way more, you know, able to go across the aisle. She's more you know, realistic on her proposals. And I think I should do a video specifically going, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren versus Bernie Sanders to show the differences. Because when you have huge networks um, that have their own agenda, such as the Young Turks trying to propel Bernie Sanders above, you know, Elizabeth Warren, I think some people like me need to bring sanity back into, you know, reality. Back to life. Back to reality. Honey, it needs to be some reality back in this darn gone um so-called reality show called the Democratic Rebates because they've been running it like darn on uh, the celebrity critics. I guess they said, well, shit, this is how darn on uh, Donald Trump done won his ass up in there. That's why they darn gonna carry themselves the same way. But we need to bring back some actual decorum when it comes to the Democratic Rebates and when it comes to breaking down policies instead of going off of darn on hearsay, just going off of, you know, face value of the candidates and with... Uh, but once again, this is not about Bernie Sanders. See, I done went on another tangent, y'all. This is my second tangent in the video, deviating from the main subject. But if y'all want one on Bernie Sanders versus Elizabeth Warren, I mean, yeah, Elizabeth Warren, put it down below. Because like I said, I, I, pers I will reveal my bias. I personally cannot see it for Bernie Sanders in any circumstances. And Biden, no better. So before people say, oh, you look like I might be teaming, no. Biden and Bernie, the two Bs, I, I can't do it with them. Now, I can be fair and impartial with every other candidate on the Republican side to the Democrat. And then any third party running in between. But them darn old two Bs, no. Mm -mm. But Elizabeth Warren, uh, Mary Wimerson, overall, two fabulous darn on female candidates running. Both of them have a myriad of, uh, you know, policies that they're um, proposing. Of course, I naturally um, lean more towards Mary Wimerson, but darn on uh, Elizabeth Warren is also a good second or third. Because Andrew Yang is up there, um, in my humble opinion, too. But y'all leave y'all thoughts on who y'all are looking favorable um, for this election. And who y'all think is the better out of these two after seeing the comparative and contrast of Marion Wimerson or Elizabeth Ward. So leave y'all thoughts down below. And I'll see y'all soon with more videos. Bye.